What kind of process did Rotax undertake to develop this engine? What was the rationale behind it? Yeah, the clear focus was uh, the fuel efficiency. This was always the main target. You know, the Rotax aircraft engine USP is uh, power to weight and also was in the past the fuel efficiency, but even more now with the new 912RS. And yeah, our development processes are quite strict within the entire BAP world. It's our new product development process, which is 36 months plus six months certification timing, in average 42 months for a new engine project. What is the initial reception like for the 912 IS? What are you hearing from operators? And what specifically was this engine meant to address? The fuel pricing in aviation is expected to grow further. It will not decrease in the future. So this was the reason to develop a new fuel electric fuel injected engine to be even more fuel efficient as our 912. For operators that have cut their teeth on the original 912, the 912S and so forth, what will be different as they step into an aircraft equipped with a 912IS? You have a much easier pre-flight check and you have an easier start-off procedure. The engine starts very smoothly, more electronic, more car-like, I would say. As I understand it, the 912IS will require some kind of electronic instrumentation for the pilot to be able to interface with the engine? Yes, since uh, Oshkosh last year, 2012, we signed a co-branding contract with TL Electronic from Czech Republic. We worked together with them on the Flydart, for example, since 15 years. So our distributor network is now possible to purchase from TL Electronic and sell worldwide. You can combine the Rotax Integra EMS with the EFI system from TL Electronic as well. So everything that pilots want to have, we will follow their path. What is the initial introduction like so far? What are you learning from the initial batch of engines now getting into the hands of the great unwashed public? Yeah, uh, of course we are following very closely the first feedback from the customers. So we produced so far and shipped so far more than 300 engines and we guess around nearly 100 are now flying, maybe up to 50 hours each. And so far, of course, the fuel efficiency we have over proven now because we said minimum 20% fuel consumption reduction compared to the carbureted 912 ULS. And uh, some magazines from Germany even uh, proved 32% uh, savings. Of course, it depends how you fly it. If you always fly full throttle, then you are in the power mode with the lambda of 0.88. You will not save that much. But if you fly in the echo mode, so below throttle position of 97% and lower, you are in the echo mode with lambda 1.1, and then you have the great savings. So, What's the future of the IS series at this point? Will we see this kind of technology extended to the turbocharged line? You know that BAP, we never talk about future projects, <laughs> so I, I cannot comment on this, I'm sorry. But of course, we are a big player in this business and we will not stop to be ahead of our competition. Christian, we really appreciate your time. We look forward to spending some more time flying the IS version of the what is one of the most uh, pivotal engines for the LSA community, specifically the 912 series. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome at our tent and in Sebring 2013. Thank you for the interview. Aero TV is brought to you by. Are you ready for the next generation of light sport airplanes? Check out the all new Bristol. Fun, fast, and easy to fly. Learn more at www.bristol.com. Pipistrel's innovative new Alpha Trainer has been designed from the ground up for flying school operations. Powered by a Rotax 80 horsepower engine, the Alpha burns only 2.5 U.S. gallons of fuel per hour at 100 to 108 knots, giving you the opportunity to make flight training cost-effective once again. Be sure to check out the Pipistrel Alpha when you're ready to select your next trainer. Get more info at pipistrel-usa.com. No other aircraft explores the limits of the light sport category more than the Carbon Cub SS. 
It can land and take off in patches that you thought were accessible only to helicopters and hikers. And it does so with a grace, confidence, and control that are Cub hallmarks. If you thought that Life Sport was just for budget-minded beginners or for veteran pilots stymied by FAA medicals, you simply must fly a Carbon Cub SS. Check us out at www.cubcrafters.com.